What's up, guys, and welcome back to my channel, Truth With The Twist. I am your host, of course, and every girl's gay best friend, Chad Turner. And today, you guys, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to bring y'all into the kitchen and show you guys what I've been up to lately. So, um, during these last couple of months, I've been dealing with a lot of depression. I also um, filmed a video just kind of chronicling the child abuse that I went through. And so, on the back end of things, what I've been doing to kind of keep my brain busy is I have been baking. And I want to give a giant shout out to King Arthur Baking Company because they have like some really, really, really good products. And I've really been enjoying myself here in the kitchen, you know what I'm saying? So um, today I bring you guys King Arthur Baking Company's um, cakey brownie recipe. Um, a few weeks ago, I did the fudge brownie and my roommates really complained that they were too thick, they were too fudgy never heard of that so <laughs> this time i wanted to do the cakey version and hopefully they'll like these ones better i really enjoyed the fudgy ones i'm not gonna lie and i'm not much of a brownie person but um king arthur they really got this stuff down to a science so if you haven't already get out there and buy some king arthur products go and buy their uh baker's companion book and i saw they came out with a, a cookie companion as well i haven't gotten that one yet if you guys want to get me something that'll be something really nice to get <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and dive into this recipe so you guys stay tuned the ingredients for these delicious brownies will be 16 tablespoons of unsalted butter Two and a quarter cups of granulated sugar, one and a quarter cups of Ghirardelli 100% cocoa powder, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, one teaspoon of espresso powder, five large eggs, half cup of water, one and a half cups of King Arthur unbleached all-purpose flour, and a cup of chocolate chips. When researching this recipe in the King Arthur Baking Companion, it says, when measuring flour by volume, fluff out the flour, sprinkle it into your dry cup measure and scrape off the excess with a straight edge. This will get you approximately 120 grams. That makes one cup. So as you can see, I use this technique every single time I scoop the flour. After scooping the excess back into the bag, I move on to bringing up my eggs to room temperature. I do this with warm water. I finish up my preparation for this recipe by measuring out my half cup of water, as well as preheating my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so I'm gonna start off by pouring the melted butter into my stand mixer. I like to tap it on the edge of the stand mixer because I come from the hood and those little drips matter. Next, I'm gonna mix in my granulated sugar and then I'm gonna turn on my stand mixer and let that blend until it's smooth. Next, I'm gonna add in the salt, baking powder, and espresso powder before moving on to the cocoa powder. And I like to turn the machine off and actually pay attention while I'm doing this part because the cocoa powder is really, really light and it's very fluffy, as you can see. Um, it creates a cloud, so I like to get in there with my rubber spatula and kind of help get things started before I turn the stand mixer back on. That way it doesn't create a big puff cloud and, and I lose a lot of my ingredients in the process. As you can see, I'm cleaning off my rubber spatula and I'm gonna let the stand mixer mix everything together, make sure everything comes together very well, becomes very well incorporated before I move on to the next step in the recipe.
Next, I'm going to beat in the eggs one at a time. I want to give them a chance to become fully incorporated before I move on to adding the next egg. As you can see, I'm getting ready to scrape, but then I thought against it. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and stop the stand mixer and raise the tilt and I'm going to go ahead and scrape down the sides. Since I've finished adding in the eggs I want to make sure that I get everything incorporated together very nicely. At this point I'm going to mix the batter with a much higher speed and the reason why is because I want to dissolve as much of the sugar and salt as I can as well as create a much more homogeneous batter. So here I almost make a very fatal mistake and that is adding in a thinner liquid into your batter with your stand mixer on a high speed setting. The reason why you never want to do that as you can see is everything almost splashed everywhere and I would have been pissed if I had to clean chocolatey batter up everywhere. So as you can see I get in there with my rubber spatula and kind of get things pre-mixed. You know the viscosity of the different liquids will definitely create a bad contrast if you add in speed. <laughs> so I got everything pre-mixed and um, then I'm going to go back in with the stand mixer and turn it down on a lower speed to, you know, make sure that things don't splash everywhere. <laughs> The next step is adding in the flour. So for this step, as you can see, I grab my rubber spatula. That thing will save you a lot of heartache and pain, okay? Use your rubber spatula, start getting things mixed in, you know. It's really, really easy. Just take your time, pre-mix everything, so that way you don't end up with a gigantic mess around your workstation. While doing this, I did become a little overzealous. I kind of quit a little bit too soon. I really should have mixed in a little bit more, you know. But I was kind of in a rush. I was ready to be done, you know. It takes a lot longer when you're trying to record this thing for YouTube. So as you see, I had a little bit of a mess. But my stand mixer really kicked in and got everything together. As you saw, I added in the chocolate chips. And I'm going to lift up the stand mixer, get my rubber spatula, go in, clean off all of the tools, make sure I don't have any clumps of flour that are stuck to the utensils, go in, scrape the sides. Um, for this particular part, I am actually cleaning off the paddle attachment because I'm going to remove it. Um, for the remainder of the recipe, I'm just going to use the rubber spatula. Um, the stand mixer has done its job and I thank it very much. <laughs> but now I'm just going to detach the bowl and just get in there with my rubber spatula. Make sure that I clean around the edges. Mix it in really good. Make sure that I don't have any lumps. Everything is really, really smooth. Look how silky smooth that is. Now remember, don't eat any raw batter because it has raw eggs in it. Next, I'm moving on to my lightly greased 9 by 13 pan and I'm going to dump my batter into the pan.
as you can see while I was pouring my batter in my pan I kind of made a little bit of a mess and I'm a bit of a perfectionist so I most definitely have to clean it up now you do not have to do this but I'm a perfectionist baby and my stuff gotta look good next we're gonna slide that thing into that hot strip club for about 28 to 30 minutes or until you insert a toothpick into the center and it come out either empty or with a few crumbs attached look at that thing Ooh, look at that hot chocolate Ooh. Now, I don't eat on camera, but let me let y'all know this thing real good, okay? Y'all need to go make it. Bone after teeth. 